Okay, so I was gonna do my regular video of showing you me playing the game and going through the motions and you seeing my real-time reactions, but man, I absolutely feel compelled that you see this immediately before you spend your money on Happy Fun Land. I had no idea what the game was about, truly just a theme park that looked like it was a horror, you know, feel and then jump scares. Other than that, I mean, I didn't know if I was sitting down the whole game standing up, nothing, truly nothing. But I was more than happy to reach out to Perp Games. I was actually asking for a Madison key and they came back and said, yes, we're going to put you on the VR database, which thank you so much, Perp Games. I really appreciate that because I do want to share as many games as possible with my community and a lot of your games you've published. I am super happy with, but I do feel compelled to let everybody know right now, this is not a complete polished product whatsoever. And I want to go through each aspect of the game so you can hear and understand what to expect if you're to buy yours. The text, man, right when I boot up the game, there's a warning sign and that warning is big and bold as I'm showing you right here. That is actually blurry guys, unfortunately. When I'm up close there, it starts to not be so blurry. You can see there's some sort of discoloration around that text. You actually have to take a step back about a foot and then you start to see this little menu pop up saying, do you accept after the warning? That is not good, man. Like right off the bat. Speaking of which, right when I turned on the game, immediately I thought it looked very cool. Super sharp. I'm getting the old classic cartoon feel of like Looney Tunes, Mickey Mouse. I mean, back to Steamboat Willie days, literally. The sound was a little overpowering right in the entrance of the lobby. And as you can see here, I'm, I'm actually just playing around with controls. And I do expect typically touch sensitivity and nothing. When you press the buttons, your fingers do clamp in as if they're about to grab something, but the triggers themselves don't have touch sensitivity. The joysticks are not there and the actual face buttons, nothing, no touch sensitivity whatsoever. So, you know, I'm kind of standing there going, okay, whatever. I start to move around. I'm using that left joystick and oh man, this blew me away. Here I am thinking I'm probably sitting most of the game and I start moving my left joystick and immediately I'm like, this is super sensitive. That left joystick recognizes the smallest amount of pressure as I apply it, meaning I'm moving super slow. A lot of VR games don't have that. It's like two or three degrees of movement, you know, on off and then fast, essentially. This has like five or six degrees of movement. It feels like that I'm registering. So awesome. Man, other games, you take note, seriously. As I start moving forward, man, I notice right away it's decoupled. So that feels like way more realistic. Again, like real life, you can walk and look around and still move in one direction. In this game, like the other games, as long as your controller is just facing forward, like literally stiff in front and you're turning your body, it recognizes that as your turn. So that's all it is really. So yes, again, super impressed with the movement, the joystick, the sensitivity, awesome. And then the actual room scale is immediately evident. Looking at the theme, the screen looks awesome. And then I get into the game. And then when I enter the game, I'm actually kind of like, oh, very neat. Seriously, as I'm walking around, I'm kind of digging everything, looking at the plants, the way that they're moving, even though they're low res, you can see them swaying in the wind. They've got life to them. Believe it or not, all these little details of seeing your environment move really does help immerse you. That's why when you don't have things like touch sensitivity immediately recognized, it's kind of like, ooh, and you're used to that in other games. Throughout the game, you know, I'd be staring at something in awe, going, wow, that looks beautiful, actually. I'm surprised at the detail. As I'm moving my head every now and then, I notice quite quickly that there's a jarring experience. And the best way to describe this is, when my, I move my head left or right like this, it feels like the frame's going like this. Super sharp right here. Look, no ghosting, none. Nothing, no jitter. It is so weird to have a mix of shiftiness, like the jitter, and then smoothness. My camera, I don't even know if I need that. Oh, it's just so sh jittery, man. It's too bad. Oh, I'm not sure. Ooh, no, it's a wait, bit of shiftiness. Up in here. <laughs> oh, it's too bad. It's just subtly shifty that it's annoying me. Oh, Ooh, that's look cool looking. Drawn. Just not with that jitter, man. Oh, awesome. Oof. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's wild. That is really cool. Seriously. Ah, <laughs> uh, neat. It all looks cool. But unfortunately, if it, if it has the shiftiness. Ah, uh, yeah, my tummy. Oof, guys. Guys. You know, if that's my experience, it looked awesome, but I'm going to remember more at the stutter and every turn that it made my stomach just slightly turn. That's not good. If you're sensitive to frame rate issues, man, you will be sensitive to this game. And I hate to say this, throughout the entire game, inconsistently, that jitter is there. And I'm a VR veteran. I've been doing this for years. 
This has to do with frame rate and my body not aligning up. It's, you know, your equilibrium, you're totally sensitive to it, man. You're in real life. You know when virtually something's not syncing up with your body. Yeah, so that really, re really hurts. I'm just gonna say that right away. You know, I, I, I expect that frame rate to be fixed. Looking at the animatronics, looking at the faces, absolutely beautiful. The animatronics themselves, they look great. I mean, it has that sheen on that face that it looks almost realistic. Whereas everything else looks good. But because of that effect as I'm moving my body and I'm trying to look at something, if it was super smooth, you know, I don't think this would be as bothersome to me. So love the details of the atmosphere, being able to actually touch the trash cans. You know, I can push that bin open and I can see inside and what's really neat. Yeah, man, you can hear those flies when you open that up. Little touches like that, super cool. Like, love that, honestly. You know, I'm rewarded for investigating and I was treated to a sound effect. It sounds silly, but man, the immersion, that really helps. There's also these orange little collectible toys or cats or whatever they are. You hit them and then you collect them throughout the game. So right away, I gotta admit, I was like, ooh, collectibles right on 3D VR environment. But as I went through the game, I have to say, it's the aesthetic I totally dig. I did go to Disney World as a kid, man. I totally remember it. And these guys did too. They had to have, man. They've been through the park. They were totally mocking the rides and attractions, which I think is great. I really do. The humor is absolutely young adult, I want to say. The smoking says it's a-okay. <laughs> Sketchy. Stinky. Drinky. That's so sharp. That's just it, man. Some of the stuff looks really good. You bust be at least this tall to ride me. Wanna get a nut, sugar? Jeez. Ooh, that's why I'm here, baby. So yeah, it did grab me, man. Like, I, I instantly got in the game and I'm like, oh, I do want to play this. I don't know what to expect. And as I'm going in with the open mind, it just, more things were standing out to me that took me away from the immersion that actually kept me in. You know, I saw there's a crouch button. If you watch any of my videos, I'm always using my body to crouch, right? So I never use a crouch button, but they do have the option. I thought, oh, that's cool. I click the button. And it does the opposite of crouch. It actually puts me up on my tiptoes. Like that is, I'm floating. I want to say three to four feet off the ground, man. I feel much taller. It's not just, you know, minimal. Very weird. I had to double check and I'm like, no man, my room floor, everything's been set. Every other game is fine. So I had to be in crouch the, the entire game. That said, I didn't hear myself in a crouch mode. The screen didn't go into a vignette or anything where I'm seeing like a shadow effect. It's as if I was moving at the regular speed, so I actually couldn't tell I was crouching. I don't understand what the purpose of crouch was, because in the game I don't really remember having to crouch. In fighting, in, in getting in any areas, nothing. And speaking of which, the options. When you hit the options, you were literally seeing all of the options available in the game. I think there's only like snap turning, man. You can't even adjust the amount of smooth turning. So that's... A problem. Now that said, I was able to fully lay down in this game. That always gets me excited. You know, I hate playing games where I physically crouch and it pops me back up because it doesn't register that I'm actually, you know, moving down to the floor properly. This game has it. So again, I don't need to be on the ground whatsoever. I don't even need to crouch, but it lets me go on the ground. So weird, man. So weird. So no touch sensitivity, no haptics aside from headset haptics and that only happens every now and then when i'm in a fight with the animatronics and those fights man just saying because we're talking about controls i am literally wiimote waggling i feel like i'm just doing this as fast as possible and i'm hearing Ch -ch -ch -ch, and i'm not even getting any haptic feedback whatsoever i don't even know if i'm hitting him or not i'm literally watching and every now and then i see a spark and he's just standing there like stiff like a robot for like five ten seconds and i don't know if that's happening because every time i hit him it cancels his animation to strike me and then later on, I see these little guys running at me and they're full animated punching me, which I'm like, oh, now I can see them throwing punches before I could not. It would be just me swinging, hilariously, violently, like wailing, doing nothing. I'm, I'm using no strength. Brutal. Uh, it's not fun. I really feel like it takes away from the game. I could actually do without the fights and just give me more of the theme and the puzzle and some rides. Sounds weird, I know, but... And these rides are like a small world truly where you're seeing these 2d panels pop up they're animating in front of you and you're just sitting in this boat ride and you're watching it all go down and every now and then something might swing from the ceiling and you might have to move your head but not really it feels like i'm actually sitting on a ride and watching things around me versus participating some of the rides did have actual gun control where you're you're holding a gun and back in the day they had these little red laser dots where you're using like laser tag so that's cool they had that here i am aiming at these things and the dot is disappearing constantly on me. It's like I can't see it perfectly smooth like it would any other game with a laser light. 
you know, because I've experienced that. Resident Evil, all these other games, man. No haptics. That is the weirdest thing, to have no haptics when you're shooting a gun. I didn't see any foveated rendering whatsoever. I didn't see any use of eye tracking whatsoever for in-game activities. Back to the haptics, the only time I felt headset haptics was the subtle vibration when I had three or four people storming me and then I feel a headset rumble. And when I see blood on the screen or I hear, oh, and I hear a heartbeat, not feel it, because you can, you could, sorry, I hear it. I know to back away, the screen's going dark. So again, very disconnected. That's huge. I'm just not used to experiencing that. And that's why I'm bitching so much. And then the objects themselves that you're interacting with, again, you cannot grab like you would with any other virtual reality game, which is the whole point of interacting with your virtual world. You can use your golf club or like your flashlight. But that lack of interactivity, you know, using my hands, grabbing objects, man, you've got the grip, but my fingers are pinching and I, I can't grab shit only like the golf club and the flashlight. Even the flashlight, guys, I'm just saying, like, you don't need it at all. There's no area in the game where you're going to be in darkness and you need a flashlight to look around because guess what? You've got a headlight on you already. <laughs> Sorry, really bothers me. Now I'm going to turn these off. That flashlight's really strong on the map. Can I turn this off? I wish I could turn this off. Does that make sense? It seems like you're you're taking aspects of games that people love, but you're not knowing how to correctly execute them. So why have a flashlight in there if you're not utilizing it whatsoever in the game? You're just doing it for the sake of doing it. When you hit these objects, when you touch them with your golf club, as I'm showing you here, they're all the same mass. I have, again, no haptics to touch them to feel any interaction. They just fly off the shelf. If I lightly tap it, and if I really hit it, I can hit home runs, man. Oh, I hit it in midair. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. Home run. Home run. I wasn't expecting that. So unrealistic. That no mass feel. Bizarre. And let's not forget about the constant jittering every time I'm trying to look at something cool and show you guys on screen. Because I am trying to demonstrate, you know, what this game has. And I kept getting thrown off. Literally, I had to keep bitching about the jitter. And then every now and then, it felt like 20% of the game, I'd be like... Oh, the game's smooth, the game's smooth. So it's inconsistent. I'd be on one ride, and when the ride turns your body, it would, without me turning my head, have a jitter still. And then on the later rides, maybe the last two, I found that, no man, I could sit there and everything's smooth turning, and when I move my head, testing it, shifting it left and right as I'm moving, it was good. With the head, does that make sense? Look, see what I mean? You're not seeing that shiftiness. So yeah, something's mucked. The other performance problems I want to say happened rarely, but it did happen enough, is I'd be going to walk over something, and it's in other games too, you'll see like a barricade laying on the ground. You don't see it because you're walking straight, but that barricade's actually tripping you up and you can't move forward. And you're like, why am I stuck? So that's evident in the game. You don't walk over the barricade, even though it's like an inch thick off the ground, you totally should be able to walk over it. Yeah, it's stuff like that. It just jars you, man. You know, you're trying to get somewhere and you can't walk around a corner properly and you're like, what's hanging me up? And you look on the floor and it's like something small. And the other brutal one is here I am. I'm trying to get through a room essentially without spoiling it. And I'm able to walk through the door without the door opening, not realizing, no, you're not supposed to do that. Yet I could enter the room thinking I'm past it. Just weird stuff, man. And then there's a few rides, like two of them which again, I'm a VR veteran. They're not fast. They're not anything crazy. You're on these little planes and it tilts you up. Really cool sensation of being tilted upwards, looking down like that. I'm actually enjoying myself in this one moment going, oh, that's awesome. Wow, that feels really weird standing on this man. Oh man, oh, I'm going upside down. That is messed up. That's screwing with me. That's cool. Oh, I like that. Yes. So once the ride ended, and then I was able to walk off of it with the joystick. I absolutely felt like I had to take a break. And when I did, oh man, I did not expect to actually have to take a break for about half an hour. Cause every time I thought about going back in, I could feel it in my stomach. It's like, nope, not ready yet. I can't remember Mirage kayak. That kayak game was the last time I felt a little funny, but man, I was able to get back in pretty quick. So now I got to talk about the audio. It's funny because when we watch cinematics in video games, we are accustomed. I want to say most of us to having subtitles on, or the default is that. I always turn it off because to me, it's like TV. I can actually see now. The graphics are so good in games. You can tell the person's lips are moving. You can totally hear and make out what they're saying for the most part. Wow, this game, absolutely not. This is where I do wish they had subtitles in the options, man. They need it because when, when you have the environment talking through speakers and then you hit a tape recorder and that tape recorder is talking over top of the speakers and then you've got like a muffled sound. And I want to say, guys, Everyone here is speaking English. I'm just horrible with accents. And because these guys are talking through like headphones, they give you virtual headphones that you're speaking to one of the main characters. 
and it gives it that headphone effect, but it's so loud and so muffled and so bassy with his accent, Louisiana or something. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I'm butchering it. But I'm like with intent trying to make out what he's saying and some of the stuff you do need to know in order to get past the level. But all of the levels and all of the puzzles are very basic. I mean, I wouldn't actually call them puzzles. It feels like it's a walkthrough. It does, honestly. And that I had to speak to the audio part because when you're listening to the tape recorder, you're entering a new area. There's a tape recorder and you'll hear like the caretaker of the park just talking about, oh, are you still leave the keys here? You know, but the kids at night used to do stuff. So I, I did this and that. But you're trying to listen because it's important for you to open the door. And, you know, there's times, half the time, I feel like I couldn't f hear what he was saying. But I was still able to easily figure out what I had to do just by walking around the area. I mean, there's not much to figure out. Yeah, listening to dialogue, honestly, was grueling for me. So on top of the jitter, man, I was like being bombarded here with problem after problem. And this is why it's affecting me. Aside from not being able to hear them, in the game I actually say this. They talk way too long. Hated the dad, had a maintenance, so there's a lost kid crying, causing a scene, can't have that in the park. If their parents come to reclaim them. We got some kid down there since last Tuesday. Uh, this isn't really our problem, this is more of a security issue. Even the voice sounds bored. We deal with it, but if they don't, you just take it down to the lost child cages and you've been done with it. Right? And I know you're trying for that. Crying kid in the middle of a happy fun park, you can't have it. Uh, it doesn't work. My advice to you is you can't have any empathy for the kid. You just gotta get him out of there. You can't have the crying kid. You can't have it. Way too long. This isn't really a maintenance problem so much as a security issue. Sometimes you just have to, but you know, sometimes security isn't around, you don't have to do it. Just saying, if you're speaking in the tone of lull, I would assume your audience will start feeling your tone. I understand the storytelling part, but that's how much that bothers me. After hearing this now for about an hour and a half of these tape recorders where I can barely understand what they're saying and they're muffled and they sound like they're half asleep, I don't think it's the voice actor. I think it's the direction of trying to make it sound like an old, you know, amusement park keeper or custodian who's, you know, just sick of helping people and stuff. And kids are always causing problems. I get that. But unfortunately, that's just very hard to hear. And it makes me just sit here kind of like fizzled is the word. So yeah, the one game, you do need subtitle options. On top of me complaining about being muffled, needing subtitles, this is a game that needs volume metrics where I can actually adjust the master volume, the voice volume, you know, the background music to the sound effects like every other game, man. The fact that this doesn't have it and you're stuck with all of that audio overlapping each other I don't get that separate sound. And speaking of which, when it comes to the 3D audio, when I'm turning my head, I can hear like water behind me and stuff. So it seems good. And then I was testing things out. It doesn't have the depth that the 3D audio provides. I can't tell how far something is away. I can just tell directionally it's behind me, almost like a surround sound effect. So yeah, just really bothered again by the, the volume. And then at the end of the game, I have to kind of spoil something for you. I'm just going to show you me sitting on the chair, having to take the headphones off my head. I always listen to everything 10 out of 10. I've had people tell me, man, you're going to lose your hearing. I haven't yet, but I've always loved loud stuff to the point, you know, people can hear me with my headphones on around me. It's just, I've always done it. This is the one game I had to throw my headphones off during one of the key cinematic type moments. And I, I could hear them clearly with the headphones off so much. So I think you can hear it through my phone that is like 10, 15 feet away recording it just to show you right now. Oh, it's a little sharp on the ears, guys. I'm shaking it on my camera. Right? Oh, somebody didn't do the audio check. No joke. You couldn't have. And there were a couple parts I did really like, and they lasted like two minutes. One was a trip scene, quite literally. I'm showing you on 2D for a second. It doesn't make you feel sick. I was just talking about this jitter thing that does this as you move your head and it's like, I'm in this trip scene and I'm totally fine. I'm able to walk around and the lines are all blurred. You're seeing this, man. I'm able to move around, no problem, no sickness. So that was nice and smooth. That was beautifully done. And then like the haunted mansion at the end, because again, Disney, I went there when I was a kid. All the rides that you're seeing in this game are mocking Disney, totally. And I feel like if you didn't go, you might not appreciate some of those jokes or if you're not understanding the dark side of Disney, you might not appreciate some of those jokes. You know, you just think that they're trying to be funny. But no, there's some cleverness there for sure. So yeah, I, I do want to say 
the developers for the game, not the publishers. Again, Perp Games publishes a lot of games. They have a lot of variety going on. The developers, again, are Spectral Illusions, and their mission statement says, Spectral Illusions is a digital animation studio that creates visual and projection effects for clients worldwide. Additionally, we develop immersive virtual reality experiences for the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. So they do need to update their website, especially if they're trying to get people on the PSVR 2. I'm surprised they don't have anything on their website promoting this game. Very weird to me. But yeah, no, they, they did it. Spectral Illusions. So when I read that, I'm like, virtual reality experiences. That is the best way to describe it. Even the collectibles, I didn't feel like I was playing a game. They weren't hard to find. They were just littered around the amusement park. Quite easy to see. I didn't get all of them, but I did get my gold trophy. I think I... 85% the amount of trophies. There's like three or four in there. And they'd be easy to get. I just have to play through it again. No platinum. No desire. Just to speak to that. Not even the simple ones. I can just go back and grab them. Just like, yeah. It left me with a negative feeling afterwards. Just not happy, man. The game will cost $24.99 US. 24.99 euros or 19.99 pounds the physical version is available in the u.s from april 30th and in europe from april 26th so very cool perp games i love that you guys are providing physical editions if you know they fix the game completely make the performance smooth add foveated rendering add touch sensitivity add a stronger headset haptic and allowed me to grab the items around the environment, which I do believe you could fix that because these are separate objects that can be hit and thrown away. Even then, I honestly have no desire to go back. Yeah, it's unfortunate. That's what I'm getting at when you're hitting the animatronics with your, your stick. Not that I f I'm saying you need to feel a weight behind your hit, but just something, man, some sort of feedback. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, guys, I'm saying even with all those corrected, everything corrected, I mean, literally polished, I still can't recommend this game. I can't. You're walking around a few times an enemy runs up and it's just like <laughs> no scariness, no excitement whatsoever, truly. Yeah, see what I mean? Like, I don't feel scared. I'm supposed to shoot you in the eye or something? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, I did. Oh man. But yeah, I do know a lot of games are this price and they're much better than this. So yeah, I just had to get that out there, guys. Man, I could talk about this forever. I'm so lit by this. I don't like shitting on games when they're given to me, especially, obviously. So I really do appreciate Perp Games giving me a review key. That is awesome of you. I super appreciate it. Please continue to, pro to provide them. I hope Madison is next. That's the one I'm thrilled to try. Everyone who's played this on flat screen says it's amazing. But let's see what it looks like in VR and how it plays. But if you want a lot of trophies that are very easy to get, that would be the one great thing about this. It is. It's like you're just walking around the park. You enter an area, trophy. Finish an area, trophy. And when I say finish, I mean you're walking through the area, hitting a few objects, and it's pretty obvious what you do, and then you're on to the next thing. So yes, I played much better, I mean, for years now, over this. So I hope this helped you guys out, and I hope this actually doesn't destroy my relationship with Perp Games as my first game that I'm reviewing for them. So again, thank you Perp Games for sending me the review key. I super appreciate it. But uh, yeah, I gotta let everybody know what I think truly, because that's why they're here watching. And if you guys liked the video today, please click that like button. And if you love what I'm doing with the channel, please subscribe to it. And for all of you that have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. I super appreciate it. Till the next. PlayStation.